What is up guys, in today's video I want to share um, why I like these three Samsung devices and I think they're great for anybody on any type of budget here and I, I want to kind of make my case here on why you should consider these three. Starting off with the price of these guys, so on the S10e it has the most uh, you know, impressive price at 200 bucks. so uh, I think the S10e is really the best deal out of the, the bunch here. I've been preaching that on this channel because it gets a lot of flack for being a smaller phone so that's why the price has come down it's not that there's actually anything wrong with the phone it's just that uh, the smartphone market has moved away from small phones um, and it's moved to you know much bigger phones around that 6.5 to 6.4 inches this is a 5.8 inch display and uh, when you have small phones you have to compromise for battery life so that's why people aren't super interested in this device or that's why the price has dropped. I think there's still a lot of uh, fans that still like this phone. Um, but yeah, so that is the reason. And the S20 FE costs around 500 bucks for a pretty much uh, uncompromised flagship. I mean, the phone is still extremely impressive. And I have separate videos on all of these phones if you guys want to check them out. And uh, you're still getting a flagship device pretty much with all the bells and whistles. The A52 is also very interesting, um, a smartphone. So the A52 here, is a mid ranger so it's it's in between a flagship and a budget phone uh, now there's two variants of the a52 there is a 5g variant and a 4g variant now this one costs 300 bucks and the 5g one will cost you 400 bucks unfortunately i can't find the 400 or the uh, 300 dollar a52 anymore and the difference with that is that with the 5g one you get 120 hertz display and a Snapdragon 750G, so you get a faster chip and a higher refresh rate. Uh, this one has 90 hertz in the Snapdragon 720G. So I'll put those links down below for you to check out. Um, but yeah, so I wanna go ahead and talk about the hardware. So on the S10e here, we have a beautiful glass and metal design, as you can see. And again, the appeal with this phone is that it's compact and it's easy to hold. So that would be the appeal here. Fingerprint scanner, you do have your headphone jack, stereo speakers, USB-C on here as well. And again, the appeal is more compact. Now, what's interesting is that the s e is the only phone that has the premium design up here. Samsung has uh, kind of moved to plastic with the flagships, or with this one at least. Or one on, but the S21 has, tech, yeah, has a plastic bag, I forget. Um, but this phone still feels solid, it has metal rails, so it doesn't feel as, like, it doesn't feel cheap, and it has a good weight to it. And you have a matte back on here. I'm not super crazy about this color, actually. Um, but this phone does not have a headphone jack, stereo speakers on here, and uh, again, much bigger display than the S10e. A52 here, pretty much the same story, but this one is completely plastic, um, you know, all around the rails and on the back. I think the A52 is still a very nice looking phone, even though it's all plastic. And since it has such a big battery, it still has a good weight to it and a really nice uh, Super AMOLED display. Now, the displays on these phones. So if you're going to choose between these three, I want to go ahead and break it down. So the S10e, again, the smaller display, Super AMOLED, 1080p panel punch hole, a uh, much bigger punch hole than these two, it is noticeable. But as far as color, you really can't tell the difference between color of any of these phones. They all have the same identical uh, color scheme going on here. The S20 FE does differ in display, so you, it is a much bigger display at 6.5 inches, and it's the only phone here with 120 hertz display. Still at 1080p resolution though, but as far as like scrolling and stuff like that, it's gonna be extremely smooth on the S20 FE. And you have these pretty much the same story here, but uh, with the A52 here, it's a Super AMOLED display at 6.5 inches, but it's 90 hertz instead of the 120 hertz. So basically when you're scrolling stuff like that, it's not gonna be um, as smooth as 120. So you have no refresh rate, 120, 90 hertz. Uh, but as far as display quality, they all look beautiful. I love uh, looking at these Samsung displays. I think Samsung still makes some of the best displays uh, on the market here so just beautiful now all of these phones are actually running Android 11 here and I want to talk about the speed so a lot of people they don't realize that the older flagship phones are just as fast as the newer flagship phones pretty much so you can see the Geekbench scores now uh, when I load the Geekbench scores you'll be like okay so the S20 has a higher score but when we actually start opening applications and stuff like that you'll notice that there's not a big difference here so 
look look at the I'll show you the difference 200 bucks uh, 500 bucks you'll see they're almost identical so a lot of people get confused because a phone may be one two or even three years older these flagship chipsets are really um, made to last a long time so you can see that it's not like it's super um, you know far back from it it's keeping up right behind it now where you will see a different a difference is with um, you know the a52 with a mid-range chipset uh, you will see a slight difference so if I was just to do this one versus this you won't see a big difference but you see boom not crazy but the difference becomes more noticeable not to say the a52 is slow by any means and you really notice it when you like launch a game see boom we're in and then so you can see not not a crazy difference but you will notice a slightly uh, you know faster experience um, but yeah so as far as speed all of these phones are still very fast guys so that's what I like about uh, these devices here now you'd be surprised as far as bells and whistles all of these phones have an IP rating all of these phones have a micro SD support as well uh, these two have a headphone jack this one does not um, but you can see you have all of your bells and whistles you have reverse wireless charging on these two but not on the mid-range um, so you know that's something to think about as well but there is one thing that I wanted to talk about and that was uh, camera quality because I think that's super important the S10e surprisingly is the weaker camera slightly weaker out of the bunch here so why I say that is I was just extremely impressed with the A52's camera I think they did a really good job with this camera on here it really nails uh, shots here and it does a better job with color accuracy than the S10e otherwise the shots are pretty much identical and you also have more lenses on here you have a macro lens and a depth sensor and there's no uh, depth sensor or macro on the S10e which some people care about some people don't but this phone nails uh, color accuracy and it nails just giving you a really good shot at this price point I mean I was super impressed with the camera uh, on this phone great detail now even for 200 bucks you can see the S10e still takes great photos it's super close uh, to uh, both of these phones it's just that the S10e can sometimes uh, oversaturate uh, colors or make them super like lifelike which doesn't always uh, it depends on the shot honestly because it only really does it outdoors but indoor shots it seems to always do a good job but this phone takes phenomenal still to me kind of flagship quality uh, photos here so it still takes really great photos uh, to me now the S20 FE of course being the newer and more expensive phone is going to take you know obviously the best photos here for sure um, so if you do if you are super uh, you know conscious about your images I don't take a lot of photos that's why I'm like you know I don't really care but um, if you do want the best images in lower light or in just you know just good medium light uh, the S20 FE is going to do a phenomenal job it's basically taking flagship quality photos up there with the iPhones and OnePlus and all that stuff so it is still going to take the best photos out of the bunch here all of these phones have stereo speakers and I'm just curious to see which ones are going to be louder here so I got my max volume we'll start with the S10e Me personally, I would go with the S10e as the best speaker because I like that uh, it has the more crisp uh, mids and highs here. And then the S20 FE and the A20 honestly sound the same. Or the not the A20, but the A52 sounds uh, pretty much the same there. But uh, the S10e speakers are extremely impressive, especially for this size. So I do want to note that uh, that is something to pay attention to. But great stereo speakers on both. It's a really good uh, thing to have because it's easy to block the speaker down here so it's always nice to have a stereo speaker set up now for all of my gamers this is what I was trying to preach so on the S10e we can see 
that if we go to settings on PUBG, we have extreme FPS all the way up to HDR and we can actually download the Ultra HD um, here. So we do have that. And then, you know, you already know on the, uh, the S20, because I want to show people the difference. You can see still the same exact settings with, so we get the same exact uh, gaming experience, but with a much cheaper price point. So if you're a gamer on a budget, pick up an old older flagship. It doesn't have to be the S10e. If it has a Snapdragon 855 or even an 845, it'll still perform the best. The difference you'll see with these mid-range phones is that you don't get that, that performance. So you can see we only get an ultra and we can we can't even go up to HDR. Now on that Snapdragon 750 one, we can probably get better settings, but um, you know it's probably still not going to be performing as good as uh, these two you know flagship phones. Uh, so that is something to consider if you are a gamer. Now one thing that these mid-range phones excel in really well uh, these days is these massive batteries. So the A52 has a 5,000 milliamp battery. Uh, and this thing lasts all day. This phone is really hard to kill in a day. Uh, so if you're somebody that's on your phone constantly, um, then this phone is really great for that. Um, so I have to give it a credit uh, there. Battery life is really great. A lot of these phones have 5,000 milliamp batteries uh, plus now. I think Samsung has a Galaxy M52 with a 6,000 milliamp battery. So these mid-rangers are uh, pretty good battery life. Uh, the S20 would be second, I believe. It has a 4,500 milliamp battery on here. Um, and again, good battery life on here. Definitely get a full days, but not as good as the A52. And then again, like I said earlier in the video, the SNE, the compromise here is kind of battery life. You can squeeze around five hours of screen on time with this phone, uh, which is not terrible. It's almost a full days battery life, but not quite. Um, but yeah, so you know, you can't quite get a full days out of this phone. So that's pretty much it guys. I just wanted to talk about uh, these three phones and sort of talk about the differences and um, you know, and differences in price to sort of explain it to people so they will know. So they have a lot of similarities, uh, but also they kind of differ in some essential spots as well. So it really comes to nitpicking, but they're all great devices. Check them out. Check out my videos on them uh, separately and I will catch you guys in the next one.